Welcome back everyone. This time we are talking about the grid splitter control. To get started in this tutorial, you need a grid with three rows, first of height 50, the third of height 10, and then put a rectangle in each row so that we can see the difference between each. Okay, so the purpose of a grid splitter is to be able to split the grid at some row or some column. So if we were to run our application and we take a look at this middle section, now we have this tiny little footer in this middle section. Well, occasionally in your application, you may want to see more of the footer. Like maybe it's an error log or a status log that is recording items and you want to see more items. So sometimes you want to hover your mouse and get a resize bar kind of like this. But instead of resizing the window, you want to be able to pull this bottom row up and see more. And that's what a grid splitter can do. So let's say this red part is our menu bar and we don't want this to be able to be pulled, but we want the footer to be pulled up. So what we need to do is we need to put a grid splitter between the green portion and the blue portion. So after our green row, let's add another row and let's give it a height of five and you'll see why. Now let's move our blue rectangle to row three. So this white row is gonna be where our grid splitter lives. So let's put a grid splitter there. And now what we want to do is we want to say grid row two, because that's where it's going to live. And now if you look at it, you see it's way over here and it's tiny. So what we need to do is we need to say horizontal alignment stretch. And now you can see that it is stretched across. You see this little middle thing and there's the ends. Now again, if we don't do that, you can see that it's only right here. So now it's stretched all the way across and it's height five, which gives the user enough pixels tall to be able to grab it with their mouse. If you make it too small, it's kind of hard to even see that it's there. So adjust it to where you like it, but try not to make it too small or too big. So we've added a row, we've added a grid splitter to our row, and we've stretched it all the way across horizontally. If we run our application, now you'll see that our cursor will change when we hover over it, and if we click and drag, we can resize our rows. So as you can see, very, very easy to do this and you can make your user experience a lot better with this one simple thing. An important thing to note about the grid splitter is how it chooses to resize. And there's a couple of caveats here that you need to be aware of. So we put our grid splitter between a star height row and a 10 height static row. So that means that this row stretches automatically while this row has a fixed height. So when you do that, the grid splitter is going to choose to resize the fixed height row into the space of the star height row. So that's a behavior you might want. Another behavior would be if you didn't have a static height here and you had two star rows, it would adjust up or down adjusting either row. Or you could have, say, a height 0.7 star there and a height 0.3 star here, which lets it stretch proportionally to one another, but they're still star rows. So in this case, it will work very similar to the static row, but it'll just start off proportional depending on how big your window is. Now where you have to be careful is trying to use a grid splitter when your rows both have static heights. So if we said height 200, and then for this one we said height 25, so you'll notice our grid does not fill up the whole window anymore because these heights don't equal 400. If we run this, now you'll see that it will resize the first row. It will leave the second row's static height and it will resize the first row. So what we're actually doing is shrinking our grid. And now that may be something we would want to do, but we're also changing the size of the rest of our window space. So if you had other elements down here, say you had two grids stacked up, when the user used this grid splitter, you could actually cause the elements in this grid to resize because the grid itself might stretch depending on your sizing of it. And now you may want that kind of behavior, but you would probably want to do it a different way because that is really confusing having a stretching element in one grid adjust the elements of another. This problem here isn't always this obvious either. 
I made these heights less than the height of the window on purpose so that we could easily see the grid is shrinking and not just resizing. But a lot of people will make the heights of their rows enough that they will fill up their window. So now it looks like our grid is stretched to our window when really it is all static heights. So now if we run and use our grid splitter, eventually this row is going to pull up off of our window and now our grid is this small box and this is just blank window space. And that can be even more confusing. So what I recommend is always using some sort of star row alongside of a static height row or using two star rows. That way your grid can stretch to its available space properly and not end up shrinking itself. So now that we know the basics of how to use it and its behaviors, let's get rid of our green rectangle. Let's add it to another grid. Let's add some column definitions. I'm going to have three columns. Let's put this grid in our parent grids row one. Now let's add some rectangles so we can see what we're doing. Let's say grid column one and have one in column two. And let's do yellow, orange, and say let's make a green one. So now we have a grid inside of our grid, and this one has three proportional star width columns. And if we run and use our horizontal grid splitter, you'll see that they still adjust accordingly because this row is still being adjusted, and all of our elements in this grid will be adjusted as well. Now for further gridception, we could put grid splitters in this grid as well. So we could actually add two more column definitions, and let's make this one width five, just like this one's height was five. And let's put another one here. Let's change this to be two and this to be four. So now we have our three columns, but we have columns in between each, and that's where our grid splitters are going to go. So now if we put a grid splitter here, and then we put it in grid.column one, and we zoom in to our grid splitter, you can see that it's already stretching vertically, but it does not stretch horizontally to match our grid width. So if we do it this way, we actually need horizontal alignment stretch on both vertical and horizontal grid splitters. Now let's copy paste our grid splitter, put one in three. So now we have zero, one, two, three, four, two grid splitters, both horizontally stretched, all of our columns stretching proportionally to each other. If we run this, now what we'll see, stretch our window out, everything will stretch accordingly. If we resize this one, both rows will resize, but then we could also resize our columns within our nested grid, and they will all resize accordingly. And this can be very, very useful for enhancing your user experience. Next up, we're going to use the expander control to learn how to expand and collapse portions of our GUI. Thank you for watching everybody. I really appreciate you. Hopefully this is helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. Happy coding and as always until next time, take care.